Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry if I already put on live uh, our program of this evening. Are you able to hear me, please? Am I audible? You are audible. Good evening. Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. I am away, uh, not at home. So, so I try to live stream directly and on the iPad. There is no way than to, to live stream. So welcome in uh, today's program. Uh, we are supposed to have um, uh, Alta today, as it is said. So welcome Auntie Debbie and uh, Uncle Hubert. Welcome Sune and Yuda. Welcome Elder Leroy. Uh, welcome as well Sister Lizel and Brother Tebo. Welcome in the program. Today's program is um, uh, special as we have already shared. Let me share the screen so that we can see as well the program. Okay. Uh, today's topic is, as it says, uh, the family altar. I hope I can hide it like this one. And um, uh, before we are talking about family altar, May I please request our brother Tsepo to open up in, uh, with our uh, prayer before we start? You may unmute yourself, my brother. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, my brother. You are very audible. Okay. Um, can we close our eyes? Yes, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this evening for allowing us together on this holiday. And we are asking, Lord, that you be with us and bless this um, Bible study. Um, <clears throat> may you guide, Lord, um, our presenters today so that the message they deliver may sit in our hearts and um, may cultivate, Lord, and, and what is intended by these presentations. We bless each and every single person that will be attending or watching this um, maybe later on. And this is our humble prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That uh, opportunity of, uh, of talking together today. Uh, am I still audible, please? Hello. Yes, good you all. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Elder. Um, I have removed the uh, um, headphone as well to hear you better. And today's topic is uh, the family altar. It will be subdivided into two parts as we will be going to, to review that, that one. The first part, uh, I will be doing it is considering the need and the necessity for a family altar in the family in the house. And the second part that uh, our elder uh, Leroy will be addressing is how to have a practical family altar and to raise it in the, in the family for us to be able to, to share it um, on uh, our family and to enjoy it as a family. So without... Uh, taken out of our time. Let us uh, start with uh, the first part. The first part is called uh, God's plan, a love in family. It says that for this reason, I bow my knees to the fathers of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is, uh, is named. As it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. As Christians, we are part of the whole family in heaven and on earth. The, the main reason for us to, to have um, this uh, kind of setup that God wants us to have, this setup is then because we are all, as it is said,
week with God, we meet as an entire family. And it says a Um, just check. Okay, so I see quite a few of us uh, are not hearing, no potential not seeing Siri as well. So let's just give him give him some time to let's see if we can get get back into the meeting. Siri, let us know once you're back. I see you have one of your devices open. Siri, we see your screen, but we're not hearing you yet. At least I'm not hearing you yet. Siri, currently we're not hearing or I'm not hearing you. If anyone else, if anyone on this call is hearing Siri, could you give us a thumbs up? If I don't see any thumbs up, then, then I'm going to assume we, we're not hearing him, although we're seeing, I'm seeing the screen. Or you can post I'm also in the just chat. seeing the screen. Just seeing the screen, okay. Thank you, Lizo. So I see Tiri is um, is moving as if we are hearing him. Okay, let. Thank you, Yuda. Let's. Uh,
I am audible now. Yes, yes okay. Tiri. We, uh, oh, we sorry. Can... So whenever yeah. I, 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 I share my screen and I, I switch on the other one, I am not audible. Sorry, so sorry for the challenge. Let me repeat the, 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 the topic again. The first part is talking about God's plan and the love in family. It says then that uh, God's plan is for, have, for us to have a love in family. And uh, as a, a love in family, the family altar is a constant daily reminder that we belong to a better family, a bigger family, which is constituted of heavenly being and, uh, beings and earthly beings. And whenever we come to God every day in our family's altar, then we are reminding ourselves of that belonging of our identity as sons and daughters of God. Then we have faced a challenge, as it says below here, where the devil himself tries to destroy the image of a loving family in us. And what he does in that uh, uh, tam uh, damage that he tries to bring is that he tries to completely change the, the meaning of the family and its importance. And he did uh, it in such a way that today's uh, family the exception the exception becomes the norm because it is as if uh, a, a divorce family is okay uh, having a single parents and separated is okay to leave the kids to go and leave because of work and the kids because I love another woman is okay. And this kind of dysfunctional family becomes the norm as it is said here. And that is why it is difficult for nowadays to, to have a, a, a loving family. However, when we come into a, 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 an altar and we build an altar inside of the home, then we bring, we must bring uh, Christ into our family. So the first one is God's ideal, to be a loving family and to be a heavenly and a earthly family. There is a challenge where say tries to damage the image of the family. And the third part is now the solution. There is a solution and that solution is called union with Christ. So as it is said here, the cause of division and discord in the family and in the church is separation from Christ to come a separation from Christ. So when we are separated from Christ, then uh, our family become separated. And when our family are separated and in trouble, remi remember our church is a gathering of families. So when we are attacked at the basic of our family, at the basic of the church, which is the family. Then when we go to the church, our mind on no longer focused on the worship. Our mind is focused on other people because we are only coming to the church feeling so, 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 so uh, drained by the issues that we are facing in our family. And that is exactly the reason God wants us to have a family altar because it is a solution. It is a medicine that we need to, to put our family together again. And it says here, to come near to Christ is to come near to one another. So the reason our church or the, the members of our church or even ourselves are separated from our other people is because we are separated from Christ. When we are closer to Christ, then we come closer each other and we are closer each other as well. But when we uh, distance ourselves from Christ, then we distance our, uh, ourselves from other people as well. And that is causing, causing the, the problem in the church, that is causing hatred in the church, that is causing a lot of vengeance in the church. But it says here, the secret of true unity in the church and in the family 
is not diplomacy. This is in Adventist Home, written by Ellen G. White. It is not diplomacy. It is not management. It is not superhuman effort. It is not to overcome difficulties, it says, but it is uh, the union with Christ. So if we wish our church to be united, if we wish our family to be united, we need to be first united with Christ. And that is on an individual basis. If I am united with Christ, I will unite my family to Christ and my family is united to Christ. Uh, my family will also help the church to be united to Christ. And that is the solution our unity with Christ. And it says here, as the member of the family draw near to Christ through personal communion with God, they will also draw near to one another. Only a union with Christ can give us humility and grace that we need in order to live in harmony with other uh, imperfect people. So what we need, as it says here then, we need humility, and we need grace. And those, those two elements are not received automatically. We need them when we are united with Christ. So humility and grace is all the two things that are all the signs that we have in united with Christ. Let me repeat it again. Unity generates uh, uh, unity with Christ generates humility and it generates grace. And when we have humility, and then we will be able to live in harmony with other imperfect people. The imperfect people start with myself first. So if several imperfect people are living together, then they will uh, have humility, they will have grace, and that is the sign that we have union with Christ. Let me repeat it again. Number one, God's plan is for us to have a love in family and the altar in the family, the prayer in the family is a constant daily reminder that we have a greater family, a bigger family waiting for us. The challenge is Satan tries to damage and destroy and separate the, the, the family from uh, one another and it is transforming the image in such a way that the dysfunctional family becomes the norm and not an exception. But when we have a, a union, which is the solution, the union with Christ, then two things will happen to us. We will have humility and we will have grace. And humility and grace will help us to be in harmony with imperfect people, as it says. So we don't need, it's not that we don't need diplomacy, but it is not the solution. It is not management. It is not superhuman efforts, but unity with Christ. Now, uh, going to the second part, uh, after we know now the ideal, the challenges and the solution, let us look at some examples in the Bible to understand the importance of a family uh, altar, as it says here. Uh, it says on this part there, in addition to personal devotional time, one of the best ways to restore a union with Christ in our families to cultivate the important habit of family devotions. So that is what we need to have to cultivate uh, or to restore as well uh, the habit of family devotion. This is very, very important to have this uh, habit of family devotion. And it says the patriarch Abraham as an example can be the model that we need. And it is in Genesis 18 verse 19. I would invite um, uh, a sister um, Liesel, could you please unmute yourself and read for us Genesis 18, 19? It is on the screen. Uh, oh. Sorry, just a moment. Um, I brought Abraham and his family worship the Lord together twice each day. Do you want me to continue or start the yes, board? Yes, please. Um, 
he was a life of prayer. He was a life of prayer. Wherever he pitched his tent, close beside it was set up his altar, calling all within his encampment to be morning and evening sacrifice. Thank you very much. It was on the second um, second uh, uh, paragraph already. It's fine. But, but what we learned here is wherever Abraham is going, thank you, Sister Lizelle, wherever he is going, the first thing that he does is to pitch um, uh, before his, his, his uh, uh, tent is to, to, uh, to build an altar to the Lord. And two days in, two times in a day he is doing that. We will see that with Elder Leroy. It is in the morning and in the evening, as it says in this book. And the one on the, uh, on the top, on the first paragraph, is reminding us that uh, he, he may command his children, for I have known him. It is God talking here in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice. So the duty of a patriarch, the duty of a family of, uh, 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 of the father is to bring his children and his household closer to Jesus. That is what it says. And then the last uh, part that we are going to see is that the father is also the priest of the house. I would invite, um, we have our brother Rotenda with yourself uh, to read this uh, uh, paragraph here, just as we, just as the morning. Is Brother Roten able? If not, can we go to Brother Yuda? If you may read, please, this uh, paragraph here. No problem. Just as the morning and evening sacrifices were offered in Old Testament times, so a short and interesting time of family worship should bless our homes every morning and evening. If ever, there was a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. Fathers and mothers should often lift up their hearts to God in humble supplication for themselves and their children. Let the father as priest of the household lay upon the altar of God the morning and evening sacrifice, while the wife and children unite in prayer and praise. In such a household, Jesus will love to tarry. Thank you very much, my brother Yuda. What we have seen here is, it is not tomorrow. It, was, it is not uh, next week that we need a family altar. It is now, as it says. And we need it in the morning and in the evening. And it should be, and we will be seeing it with uh, Elder Leroy, it should be short, as it is said here, but sweet whenever we meet with uh, the Lord so that we remember that aspect of the family. Uh, the last part before we move on with uh, Elder Leroy, it says the danger in family life. I would like to uh, request uh, Auntie Debbie, are you able to unmute Auntie Debbie to read for us this paragraph, please? Sorry, um, okay. Which last paragraph? It starts where? In too many uh, households, that okay. one. In too, yeah, all right. In too many households, prayer is neglected. Parents feel that they have no time for morning and evening worship. They cannot spare a few moments um, to be spent in thanksgiving to God for his abundant mercies. They have no time to offer prayer for divine help and guidance and for the abiding presence of Jesus in the household. They go forth to labor as the ox or the horse goes. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it says, uh, thank you, Auntie Debbie, it says, they go forth to labor as the ox, the ox of the horse goes without one thought of God's heaven. So uh, the question is here, are we like donkeys and ox and horses? Because they go out without thinking about the God of heaven. But we, when we go out of the house, we need to have a morning and evening worship. And three things it says here that we need to, we will be gaining when we do that. Number one, we need to recognize the mercies of God. As it says here, we need to recognize the mercies of God in the morning worship. Number two, we need to get the divine help and guidance in the morning worship. And number three, we need to abide with the presence of Jesus by calling upon his uh, power in our house. So those are what we have learned today. Let me repeat it again so that we remind it before I move uh, it, I, I uh, give it to, to Elder Leroy. The first part is the ideal of God is to have a loving family. And as a loving family, it is an altar is a, a constant reminder uh, of the worship in uh, the family, is a constant reminder in the morning and evening that we belong to a better family. We have a challenge because Satan tries to damage and dish our family within and making it a dysfunctional family. But there is a solution. It is not diplomacy. It is not management. It is not superhuman efforts. It is just the union with Christ. And that union with Christ will bring us humility and it will bring us grace. That humility and grace will make us in harmony. We put us in harmony with other imperfect people. And we have learned here that Abraham was a perfect example of a, a, a beautiful family where Abraham, wherever he goes, he always pitch his tent and closer to it, he builds an altar to the Lord in the morning, morning and in the evening. And we have learned here that as Abraham, the father is the priest of the house. And that should be not tomorrow or to, uh, in next week, but it should start today. And we have learned as well the danger of going out of the house in the morning or in the evening without putting our lives in front in the hands of God because if we do that we are not better than ox oxes and horses and donkeys going out to labor but we are human beings we are daughters and sons of God so may God help us to have that wonderful uh, family altar in our house without waiting Elder Leroy I give you the uh, opportunity to share your part thank you very much It's, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Um, Siri, you, you can leave. You can leave that up. Okay, mind. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me uh, start uh, sharing it again. And leave Thank it you. up. And, and I know you also have a, a um, what's it, the Bible app as well, if you can get that mm -hmm. one ready too. And then, um, yeah, I, I, I think I said good evening to everyone. I hope you uh, nice and warm. <laughs> we have a really chilly, chilly uh, Pretoria today. Um, on this, uh, this is a day for youth only. For us elderly people, it's really cold. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so how can we put away our horse ways? How can I stop being a horse or uh, we'll stop being an ox? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is the absolute truth. We um, go out, go, we live our lives as if we are, ho are horses or, or oxen um, if we don't start our day with Christ, right? So, so, so some principles I'd like to bring um, to our attention. And today I'm going to ask you to go to Deuteronomy. Both, both of these sections I'm going to read from are from Deuteronomy. And the first one is, Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 4 to verse 9, All right, from verse 4 to verse 9. Um, you might be familiar with this section. This is called the Shema, right? And every 
every Jewish person knows this by heart, right? Because uh, it has it it has some principles upon which our devotion to God, the um, or the foundation of of those devotion, the, the the devotion, right? And that means it also not only applies to the individual devotion, but also to to the family devotion. Because at the end of the day, Christ has brought us together to to be a um, a, a body of Christ, and that includes not only us here on earth, but also the angels, Christ, um, the rest of the universe as well. And we're all part of that body, right? So at, at no point should we think that we are a minority. Uh, I mean, this universe, we are a majority, right? So let's, let's read um, from verse 4 to verse 9. Um, let me see, is there, I think you asked, um, you are some people already. Albert, are you there tonight? <laughs> you are the great stuff, yeah. Albert. Yeah. Albert, would you mind yeah. reading from verse 4 to 9, please? Okay. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be a spotlight between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house Thank you so much, Albert. All right. So if we if we have a look at that, the first thing there is it, it aligns with the commandments, right? It says that the Lord our God he is one, right? That's the first thing it says, listen. Well, the first thing actually it says is to listen, right? And that, that becomes important to listening to um, what the Lord has put there for us, but also listening to his word listening to others also during during our family devotion. And then the next thing it says, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? So echoing echoing what was shared in, in chapter five, which was the repetition of the, the, um, the Ten Commandments. But then it tells us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you hear that again in the New Testament. Um, but this is where you, you find it. Um, so it's not all, all means all, right? All is 100%. Um, and then the Lord also tells us um, how to go, how does one go about loving the Lord with all your heart? Uh, it says, well, these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And we know that only Christ can put that in our heart. And once it's in my heart, what do I need to do? I need to, I shall teach them diligently to my children, your children, or anyone else that we can consider being a guardian of, and also, and, um, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, uh, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign to your hand and as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on your doorposts of your house. So and on your gate. So these are all indications. If we apply it to our, our, um, our devotionals, um, our family devotionals, then these are indications that my house, my house is another house of prayer, a house of God. My family and everyone in this home becomes part of this, um, this commandment that the Lord has given to me, right? So I put them I need to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my strength and all my mind. And I need to have the Lord put it, put all his commandments in my heart. And then I need to teach, right? Teach that. So if you think about it, that's where the, um, the family devotion also comes in. Where it's a special time of teaching as well. A special time where your children can see or your husband, your wife can see um, your dedication to the Lord. Uh, and when you where you can impart these words to to um, to your household, 
Now, then the next the next section I'd like us to look at um, is in Deuteronomy 17, Siri. Deuteronomy 17, and we're going to look at verse, we're going to go to verse 18, 18 all the way to 20, all right? And if you're familiar with Deuteronomy, then especially 17, then um, this, this is almost preempting that um, if Israel one day has a king, uh, what are the responsibilities of the king? So it tells, it's earlier on, it speaks about how they should choose the king and what kind of life the king must have. But here from verse 18, it specifically speaks to what the king needs to do every day. And if it's good enough for the king of Israel from the Lord, then us who are children also of, of the Lord, children of the kingdom, this is also something that is that we can apply to our lives. So what does the Lord say the king, the king of Israel, if there's a king of Israel one day, what must this king do? So I'm going to read from 18. It says, um, also it shall be when he, so this is the king, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write for himself a copy of this, this law in a book from the one before the priests, the Levites. Right. So copying, copying the... The um, what's it? Uh, the, the 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 Torah, right? The books, and it shall be with him, and be sh and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law, and these statutes, that in his heart may not be lifted, that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren, that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or to the left and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom and he and his children uh, in the land of Israel, right? So, so there also it says, um, as we read, that in, if I look at my Bible in verse 19, it says, he must always keep that copy with him and read it daily as long as he lives. And then the Lord gives reasons why. This regular reading from verse 20 will prevent him from becoming proud and acting as if he is above his fellow citizens. It will also prevent him from turning away from these commandments in the smallest way, and it will ensure that he and his descendants will reign for many generations in Israel. Right? So, so those are the, the, two, the two passages that I'd like us to, to keep in mind when as we're dealing with the altar right so Siri brought in um, Abraham and what uh, also words of inspiration um, and I'm adding in our responsibility which which we find in Deuteronomy 6 from verse 4 all the way down to to verse um, what was it uh, 9 and then Deuteronomy 17 where it speaks about what the king should do every day and we as God's children um, in service of the king, we also will benefit from those same instructions, right? So um, the regular regular family worship invites, as I said, we're part of this family. So it invites the angels also into our home, right? And it creates this spiritual atmosphere and it also binds us as a family together, right? Um, and you can find some of that in uh, Child Guidance, right? That's one of the books that um, are published by, by the, um, I think it's the E.G. White um, Center. So there are eight, eight principles that they, they speak about. Um, the first one is fixed, fixed times for worship. And then as Syria alluded, alluded to early in the morning, and so have worship in the morning and around sunset, uh, the father or mother, or the mother in the father's absence must lead out this worship and then um, secure the protection of the angels. So let's take the first one, right? The fixed times of worship. Um, it's an appointment that we have with God every morning and every evening. And so I'm taking these two items together, the fixed times of worship and uh, worshiping in the morning and then around sunset, uh, around the sunset hour. Um, it as we make other appointments with other people, we, if we have these fixed times, 
um, we you build up firstly uh, you, you build up this um, this habit and it's a, we have good habits and bad habits this one is a positive one right um, that at this time in the morning we will we will be meeting and at this time in the evening we'll, we will be meeting as well um, for us yeah in our home um, as soon as we wake up so so either if it's with the alarm or not with the alarm when we wake up we wake the other one up and uh, then we prepare to worship. Um, sometimes you wake up earlier, you do your own devotional, and then at, uh, so it's between 5.30 and 6, then you go and you wake up the other one, and then we worship together, right? So that our fixed time in the morning is between 5.30 to 6, and then in the evening, again, from 6, between 6 and 7. Um, and those are our, our times. If something comes up, um, and you will, we'll speak about that later, but if something comes up, it is the exception. Like tonight, we have something at seven. Um, so we will do, we'll try to meet a little bit earlier uh, than, than around seven o'clock. Um, and if I have some, or my wife has some early appointment in the morning, then we will also get up a little bit earlier to worship. So in the morning and around sunset, um, Every family let prayer ascend to heaven, both in the morning and in the cool hour. Um, it says here, yeah, morning and evening, the heavenly universe take notice of every praying household, right? And also it mirrors what was done um, in, in Israel as well, right? When they were going through the desert and once they settled as well, um, the, at the temple, they had the morning and the, and the evening um, worship services. <laughs> Then who leads out, um, father or mother, in the father's absence, they lead out. Um, so, and this is before you leave your house to go and labor, whatever your labor is, even if you're, if these days some people's uh, labor is in the same place, you get up and you, you go to another room and you work there, but before you go and work or do anything else, uh, we meet together. And all of us get together, the father, the mother, everybody who's in, in the household. And we then we plead fervently with God to keep us through the day. Um, because we understand that it's not through our own power that we do any of what we do during the day, right? We ask to be guided by the Lord. We put our plans before him so that uh, sometimes we have plans and, and we can be in a hurry when the Lord has has. Um, maybe planned for someone, for us to meet somebody, but we're in such a hurry because I need to get to the next thing. Um, and I can miss out that opportunity. So I, we put our plans in his hands. Um, in, in, our, in our family, so I'm talking back in the day with my parents, um, as we got older, they also started giving us responsibility. So we, we would wake up in the morning and then, yeah, it's my brothers, my older brothers turn. And, and then the next time, maybe it's me. So it's, that's to teach us also, you know, that because they know one day we are going to be on our own. One day we'll have our own families. So it teaches us to have this as a practice in our home, right? Even last year when I stayed with my mom, <laughs> then, uh, we didn't do morning together. Um, I mean, with, with my mother, but the evening, my wife and myself and my mother, we would meet to to have worship, so that still still continues, and it's it's really assuring as well because when when I was on my own, um, and sometimes you you in you feel challenged, right? But you always know that hey, this time of the morning or this time of the day, my mother is worshiping, and my mother's praying for me, right? Or this time of the evening, definitely I know my parents are praying. And they will be mentioning myself and my brother and once I got married uh, as well. So it's, it's really assuring to know that, you're, that there's somebody somewhere on this planet, um, some human being praying for you and praying very personally for you as well. So as they say in the next one, we, you secure the protection of the angels. You come in humility. Um, Thierry also spoke about that. You come with a heart full of tenderness. And with the sense that temptations are and dangers are before you and your children, but by faith you bind all of them to to that altar, right? So uh, the Lord does tell us that each one of us we have a ministering angel with us 
from the littlest ones to, to us older ones who think we can do everything, right? Uh, but no, it's, it's, um, there are so many dangers around us. We have a, an active enemy um, and we absolutely need, need the protection of, of our, our bigger family, right? Then again, our bigger family takes care of us and those are, are Christ's angels. Um, so yes, it's, it's reassuring to know um, if you have this practice in your family, to know that your mom, your father, your brother, your sister, who has been, who this has been embedded in, um, potentially they are praying for you at, this, at a particular time of the day, all right? So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I really appreciate it. Then we keep it short and interesting, um, especially when you have younger ones, the children. Um, I, my mom, my mom's a, um, what's it, a, a primary school teacher. Yeah, I was going to say elementary school, but that's a different country. Primary school teacher. And um, so, so we had really interesting um, family worships, you know, where we, where we had to, my mom would tell the story and then we have to act out, act out the story. Otherwise you're sitting there and you're half asleep, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so as little kids, as kids, we, my mom would have us do various activities to keep it interesting, interesting for us and also to embed it in, in our minds and maybe re repetition of the memory verse as well. So let the seasons of family worship be short and also spirited, not something drawn out and, um, you know, doing a deep, deep study uh, uh, with, with the, the children early in the morning. So do not let your children or any member of the family dread, dread coming to worship. Like, oh, man, <laughs> it's worship again uh, because of because it's so tedious or there's just it's just absolutely boring. So at at um, our parents would also get um, devotionals, and so they are they are the, the church has pre has prepared a lot of devotions um, devotions for for families for. Teenagers for women is whatever devote for prayer. There's a devotional for prepared for the year. Um, you can get them at the at the church um, bookstore. Um, but yeah, so because the the different parts or the different periods of your life. So when when I was in maybe at high school or at university, we we need a a, a different type of um, devotional topic and also angle emphasis um, during that time of your life. So our parents would get those for us. And then in the evening, we would do the, um, your um, lesson studies, right? And we, we do the same now in the morning, we have um, devotionals and in the evening, we, we prepare the, the lesson together. So um, yeah, make it, a, make it a special time. When some evenings we would go to our, our uncle and he was a, um, he's in biology. And then he would tell, he would tell, you know, things that he's come across and then put a spiritual lesson to it so that us also in our everyday life, we can see the spiritual lesson in what, in what we are doing. Like, like Sune did on this, on the past Sabbath, right? She said, caterpillar, usually if I see caterpillar, <laughs> then I think about the caterpillar destroying my, my plants, right? But but yeah, the caterpillar also has a different lesson um, in that they, through their feasting on my plants, <laughs> they have the opportunity to, uh, to undergo metamorphosis and they become these beautiful, beautiful butterflies or moths. And there's a spiritual lesson to that as well. So we see all these things, you start to see them in, in your everyday life as well. Um, so some components of family worship. You can select a, a portion of scripture and read that to, to the family and then ask for, for comments. Um, that's something my father would do as well. Um, a few verses are sufficient. The, the Bible is just loaded with lessons and, and I believe we all know that. There, there are questions that, think about some questions you can ask, um, a few, few earnest ones, some, make some interesting remarks. Um, so that means also you need to prepare a little bit before the time. So sometimes before we start, I will go through the, 
the devotional and then I will read it um, read it to my wife. So at least a few verses of spirited song may be sung. Um, we <laughs> we rather do that in the evening. Um, in the morning, our voices are just not there. <laughs> so, and um, the prayer offered, some people have good voices in the morning, but not us. And then the prayer offered should be short and pointed, right? If you have particular people you want to pray for as well in the morning as a, as a family. So beside your personal prayers, um, there can be items that you as a family want to pray about, particularly that's the time to do it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the one who leads in prayer should not pray about everything, right? But should express the needs in simple words and praise God with thanksgiving as well. And then a critical one is not to be governed by our circumstances. Uh, family worship shouldn't be governed by that. Um, you are not to pray occasionally. And when you have a large day's work to do, then you go, ah, I don't have time for family worship. Because what happens is if we have children or someone else in, in our home or even, or even our spouse, it tells them that um, Christ is not important, that worship is not important, that work is more important than that. And that, that will impact your, your witnessing and your credibility in your home as well. When you tell your children, do your homework, and the homework takes precedence over, over spiritual matters, right? Well, homework is important, right? We, uh, we also need to develop that part of, of um, our being. But the spiritual part, actually, in one of the devotionals I read not too long ago, says this, your spiritual uh, development increases, or your, 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 your intellectual um, development increases in proportion to your spiritual development, right? So your spiritual development is the one that we need to particularly grow. Um, yeah, so, and that's, like I says, it sends, it sends a signal that it's not special. There's no consequence to missing worship, right? And then the last one, the eighth one, is not to neglect even when enjoying company. You know, if it's for the comfort and happiness of guests, let us not overlook our obligations to God. The hour of prayer should not be neglected for any consideration. Remember what we, what we re read in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 from 4 to 9, there about in verse 8 or 9, it says, it needs to be on your doorposts, on your gates, right? On your hands, in your head. Um, so those are indications to others as well that you are coming into a home that fears the Lord, that worships the Lord, that gives thanks to him. And come in, come and see how we worship, right? Um, if we go to other homes, they say, come and see, we're watching soccer. Then I, I can't say, hey, I'm not interested in soccer. Can you put uh, some National Geographic thing on, right? <laughs> I fall, you kind of fall in with them. So we can do the same uh, in our home because this is what is important to us in our home. And maybe not soccer or whatever, but the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That's what's important in my home. And believe it or not, you will benefit from it as well um, that the person who is visiting. Um, so yeah, even uh, when, when um, people of other faith come, so not Christian even, they came to our home then, and it's worship time. My father said, come join us. Um, and then we worship and then we continue. And yeah, quite often uh, they, people there know that you not, don't only speak, speak that you're a Christian, but you live it as well, totally, right? And, quite, and um, this is not as common as, as one would hope it to be. So let all who visit Christians see that the hour of prayer is the most precious, the most sacred, and the happiest hour of the day. If you look at the practical application, you can look at that um, in your own time, but it gives you some, just some ideas of how to, how to do a, um, a family worship. They, they mention a couple of items like opening prayer, devotional reading, sing a hymn, and then closing prayer. And they give you, give you some um, some material as well. The, the, while preparing for this, I, I asked my wife also to share with me what, what she enjoys or what she thinks about the um, family worship because she's, she's not from an SDA family. In fact, a, a family 
um, they they are what's it cultural Buddhists, right? Almost like we have cultural Christians as well. Um, and she says it's she feels it's almost like Sabbath, right? And and that that's fantastic to hear um, because in in our devotional time as well, it's really difficult to worship if you have had some falling out with your family member. And yeah, I'm saying you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Yeah, how does how does your family member take that to heart if we have if we are not right with one another? So the the morning or the evening worship gives us that opportunity to reconcile as a family, to live the principles that we say we want to live. I, I saw in the chat you were saying I'm this one kindness, I'm this one humble in this one that I, I can't remember all of them so yeah how can I call myself this one kindness if if I am unkind and I go and worship as a, with an unkind heart and I tomorrow morning again by God's grace I wake up and I continue with my unkindness I haven't reconciled so yeah the, the devotional time gives us that opportunity to reconcile to teach um, to teach, to correct, but all in humility uh, and knowing that that I also need to be open to be taught, to be corrected, to be encouraged as well. Right, so let, let us get away from being a horse and bring an ox and let us become, by God's grace, children of God. I just want to show you some, some material that you can use. Um, I don't want, this is a little book uh, for children. So yeah, when we were younger, uh, my mom used to have us read. This is Esther, right? So so also we learn to read by by reading the Bible or the books, and then also um, our lesson book, right? This is what we do in the evenings usually. Um, and there are different lesson books. There's the adult one. This is for like teenagers. Um, yeah, before you get to university cornerstone so you go through those with with the children books like this as well uh prayer ideas for children so yeah to teach the kids to pray even when we're young like when we were down there last year my one of my cousins they have a a little baby like sunet and then in the devotional if if they're there with us then and we, we do a devotional with, with a little one, even though she doesn't understand yet, but uh, they get to know God. And then these are, are special devotionals. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's, that's, and this is a one for women, right? I, I stole this from my mother <laughs> or borrowed it. <laughs> and then sometimes we also just, we just read a, a nice story from Adventist World or so many other other resources that that the church prepares for us. You know, in our church, there is a, a culpiter. Um, oh, forgot his name now. Um, <laughs> uh, the the leader of 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 um, Pathfinders, Terry. Uh, Tom. Tom, yeah. Tom. Tom mm -hmm. sells sells um, SDA books, right? So he has these. Books for children. Um, I still remember them, the stories from, from those books for children, the Bible stories, with all these pictures and things. I really enjoyed them uh, when my mother would tell stories to us. And even now when she, when she teaches the younger kids, then I still <laughs> get a kick from them. So, yeah, I really I pray that in your home you can cultivate that, that love for devotion. I know there was a time when... Um, my brother and I started not liking it because my father would wake us really up early in the morning. But um, now as an older person, I, I absolutely am grateful that my father continued with that um, and that I can continue it in, in my home too. So I pray that by God's grace, you'll bring this practice in your home. And next time you can come and share with us what, what you're doing uh, so that we can Think, oh, that's interesting. Let me try that at home too. Okay. Thank you, Tiri. Apologies for going a few minutes over. Please forgive me, my brothers and sisters.
Thank you very much, Elder Leroy. I appreciate a lot for your um, uh, message. It was wonderful indeed. Uh, let me, uh, is it possible for me to request Paul or Amy to end up with us? They are new with us and uh, uh, we would like to welcome you specifically by, by asking you to pray if it is possible, please. Okay, can we close our eyes? Yes, please. Thank you, Paul. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to join our brothers and sisters in Christ in learning more about you. And thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to how to prepare ourselves and how to worship as a family together so that we may teach the generations to, to come to follow you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us on a daily basis. And we pray that you would be with everyone in this group as they go through this evening and into preparation day tomorrow. Pray that you keep them all safe. And we thank you, Father, for all of the opportunities that you give us to to witness to others and to help those that are in need. Lord, we ask that you be with uh, people that we need to talk to and that we need to witness to still to bring them to you, Lord. And we pray that you will help that this group grows. We pray this, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Paul. And uh, see you again next week, everyone. I think it is uh, Sister Sune and Sister uh, Simone who will be leading us together next week. And on another uh, part of witnessing now, talking about witnessing. So God bless you and see you again next week. Blessings and thank you, Elder Leroy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you too. Bye bye. Bye bye.